Okay, you've finished up step one now, and by now you're asking, why in the world did I have to find out the kilowatt hour usage of everything that I own? That was a lot of stuff. Well, now that you have that information, you can categorize the things that are absolutely necessary and those that fall into a more luxury category. Add up the use of everything you want to run and add up just the things that are absolutely necessary for a separate purpose. Now it's time to talk about batteries. The thing I want to really stress here is it's not important that you understand the formulas because the purpose of the formulas is to get you the size of batteries that you need. And as long as you plug everything into the formulas, you'll find out exactly the size of battery bank you need. So there's a very direct correlation between how deep a battery is discharged between charges and how long it'll last. To a lesser degree, temperature and how long a battery is stored without use also affects its life. That's why our last step of adding up our electrical usage is so important. If you kill your batteries in six months, you're going to hate everything about alternative power. But if you follow these guidelines, you and your batteries will have a long and happy life together. First, let's talk about battery types. The first ones are what I call junk. If it resembles a car battery at all, it is junk and it won't hold up to the demands of a battery powered home. Another junk battery is gel cell. They just don't last. And please take it from the voice of experience. Learn from me for free. Don't make the costly mistakes I've made. Neither of these types of batteries are designed for the kind of use that we have in mind. There are people who swear on deep cycle car looking batteries or gel cells and those are the same people that are either selling those batteries or they play with alternative energy and really aren't living it solo or they haven't been living with it for very long. Now there are two types of batteries also that are some lean mean boogers but they're very expensive. Those are nickel cadmium and nickel iron. And I'm not talking about the double A's you get at Walmart. I'm talking big guys that you have to add water and oil to. The pros on these are longevity, durability, and lightweight. The cons are the heavy price, they have large voltage swings, and you have to add water just about every week, and you have to check the oil level. <laughs> Sounds kind of like a car, doesn't it? But they have to have a layer of oil on top of the electrolyte to keep the electrolyte and the air separate. These batteries are alkaline based instead of acid based. And they will live pretty much forever as long as the electrolyte is, in, is maintained and the cases never split or break. Your great grandkids could theoretically be using these. But the voltage swing causes problems. I had a small set in New Mexico and I had a love-hate relationship with that set. The 24 volt battery bank had to get to 36 volts before it could actually even start getting a good charge. And the inverter wouldn't even run because it errored out on a high voltage error. And I had to wait until it got dark and the voltage would fall below 32 volts before I could even have electricity. And that's something that you have to really debate but they do last forever. There's some good batteries, but they cost about four to six times as much as regular batteries. Now there are a lot of other batteries left, but it leaves us with two primary contenders, the good old wet cell battery and the new AGM batteries. I have a lot of experience with wet cells and the AGM batteries I've only had for about four months. I still don't have an opinion on the AGM batteries yet, other than the EPA likes them because they're considered leak proof and spill proof. Wet cells are kind of like your car battery in that if you poke a hole in it, all the electrolyte leaks out and your battery just doesn't work anymore. The difference between AGM and wet cell is that AGM batteries have a mat between the plates that is just wetted with electrolyte. It has just enough electrolyte in the mat for the chemical reaction to produce electricity, where in wet cells the plates are completely submerged in liquid electrolyte. AGM batteries won't leak, explode, or gas out like wet cells. They have a catalyst in the casing that recombines the hydrogen and oxygen molecules back into water. That's what prevents them from gassing or exploding like wet cells can. You never add water to AGM batteries. 
but the bottom line is chemically wet cells and AGM batteries are identical and they require a certain charging and monitoring that that will be covered in another video outside the scope of this video primer series. Right now we're just uh, focused on the size of the battery bank that we need. Nothing to do with maintenance or hooking them up or anything like that. So my opinion is stick with wet cells, genuine deep cycle batteries, possibly AGMs for a better life. I'll have a better opinion on AGMs in another year or two after I've gotten more experience with it. For the purposes of discussion, I'm going to use my own system as a point of discussion because I still have my notes from designing it. The first thing you want to do is decide how many volts you want your system to be. A lot of people choose 12 volts because 12 volts appliances can be bought at truck stops. You can run car stereos, all kinds of cool lights and stuff. That's fine for a car, but not your home. First of all, the lower your voltage is, the bigger your wire has to be, and we all know what the price of copper is these days. I chose 24 volts on my second system because 24 volt inverters were starting to catch on. But today you can get a 48 volt inverter for the same cost and you'll end up using wire about one eighth of the size you would have to use for a comparable 12 volt system. If you choose a 12 volt battery bank, it has to be four times the amp hours as the 48 volt battery bank to store the same amount of power. My 400 amp hour 48 volt battery bank has the same power as a 1600 amp hour 12 volt battery bank. A 12 volt inverter will demand 400 amps from its batteries while mine will only require 100 amps to supply the same amount of power. Choose the highest voltage available to you and save tons of money all the way down the line. I had a fellow tell me once, boy I'd never have a voltage that high in my house, but I didn't have the nerve to ask him what voltage the lights were in his home. For my house, we calculated our most basic needs to add up to 3 kilowatt hours per day. That included us to be able to use the water well, the refrigerator, lights, laptop computers, and microwave for 20 minutes each day. I also wanted a system that could carry us for five days without a charge. Now we have to calculate the capacity of the batteries that we will need. I multiplied that three kilowatt hours per day of our needed electricity times the number of days I wanted, which was five. I, needed, I need a 15 kilowatt hour bank of batteries to sustain my family for five days. Now batteries are measured in amp hours and not kilowatt hours. So how do we get to that? We divide the 15 kilowatt hours of electricity that we require by the battery voltage that we want to use. In this case, it's 15,000 watt or watt hours divided by 48, which is the voltage of the battery bank that gives us 312.5. That's 312.5 amp hours that we need at a minimum in our battery bank. But remember what I said about never wanting to discharge our batteries more than 50% as a worst case scenario when possible. So I need a 625 amp, amp hour battery bank. A quick call to my supplier revealed that I was going to make some adjustments. A 400 amp, amp hour battery bank was fairly reasonable but the next size up was in upper orbit for my budget. So I now have a 400 amp hour battery set that will last me three days with no charge at all, or five days if we take only half the showers. If I had wanted a 12 volt system, the same calculation would be 15,000 watt hours divided by 12 volts gives 1,250 amp hours times two for the half discharge gives us with a 2,000 500 amp hour battery bank that we need to deliver the same power. Our formula for calculating a battery bank size is the basic daily required kilowatt hours times 1000, that gives us watt hours, times the number of days that you want for reserve without any kind of charging, and then you divide that by your desired battery voltage to give you the amp hours that you'll need from your batteries Multiply that times two to give you the worst case scenario of only a 50% discharge rate. 
So now that you've gotten that figured, you, now you might think it's time to go buy some new batteries. Not so, my good friend. There's one more thing we need to calculate. We use the same basic formula, but with all of your wanted items to run on your system this time. I left out the items that we would use only during times of charging, such as laundry, heavy cooking, air compressors, saws, drills, that kind of stuff. Then I took the kilowatt hours usage of all of my wanted items times the number of days of reserve, which is one, because we're only doing it on a daily calculation this time. But instead of multiplying the factor by two for 50% discharge maximum, I multiply it by four, which gives us an approximate 10% discharge maximum. In my case, we wanted to use about four and a half kilowatt hours per day. So I multiplied the four and a half kilowatt hours times a thousand divided by the 48 volts times four and that gave 375 amp hours. That's still below my 400 amp hour battery bank capacity that I, uh, that I needed. Now there are people who are going to say this formula is flawed, but the items we're using for the calculation assume 24 hours of battery discharge. I typically get a minimum of 8 hours of winter sun, which leaves only 16 hours of real battery consumption in our worst case scenario. So the formula is good for just about anyone. It's fairly simple and it works. This formula is also the reason that each morning I get up with the batteries usually discharged less than 5%. At this rate, the batteries should last me many years. I left the heavy usage items like water heaters, heat pumps, and so forth completely out of my equations on purpose. If you absolutely want to run your water heater or heat pumps at night when all you're running them on is batteries only, then you've got tons more money than I have and I salute you and your batteries and your charge controller and all your PV panels and all your copper wiring. So our formula for daily battery bank amp hour requirements is desired daily kilowatt hours times 1000 divided by your battery voltage times 4. My reserve size needed to be at least 625 amp hours and my daily desired size needed a 375 amp hour bank. You'll go with a battery bank amp hours being the larger of the two numbers you come up with. So mine should have been 625 amp hours for five days of reserve. Instead, I settled for a reserve that's good for three days. That's three kilowatt hours times 1,000 times three divided by 48 times two gave me 375 amp hours. So I'm, I'm good in, in, for three days. You don't have to worry about what the formulas mean so much as plugging in the numbers to get the battery size you'll need. It'll work. Now let's talk a little bit about why batteries and state of charge mean so much. Here's the life cycle versus depth of discharge for my batteries. You can see that if I dis discharge my batteries 100% between charges or each day because each day I intend to have the batteries charged completely again. So if I discharge them at 100% between charges, then I'll get about 600 cycles, or in this case, about 600 days of use from my battery. But on the other end of the chart, if I discharge my batteries only 10% between charges, or each day, my batteries should last nearly 5,000 cycles, or 5,000 days. That's nearly 10 times the life for just taking it easy on them. Also, Real life scenarios tend to be about 80% of what manufacturers claim. So those 600 cycles will be closer to 480 cycles and the 5,000 cycles will be a little closer to 4,000. But at least now you know why the state of discharge or charge is so important for batteries. It's the life of your batteries. How can you tell what state of charge your batteries are at? Well, my batteries came with yet another chart. This one tells your state of charge by your voltage. You'll notice that the chart only goes to 12, so I have to multiply the 12 volt column by four, and then I get the state of charge for my battery set. Secondly, the state of charge voltages are when the batteries are at rest. When we run the microwave, the voltage goes down to about 48.8 volts. Well, in this chart, that's about a 50% state of discharge. But when the microwave goes off, the voltage creeps back up to about 50 vo 52 volts. 
When I get up in the morning, the voltage is usually around 51.2 volts, nearly a hundred percent state of charge. But if we stay up late watching a couple of movies and popping popcorn, then the voltage is around 50.8 volts in the morning when we get up. So now you can go find out what your needed batteries will cost and take a lot of time digging up the best deal you can find. A place that sells forklift batteries can be a good place to start for electric forklifts. The first set of batteries I ever owned was from a scrapyard in town that had just gotten a load of big batteries from the telephone company that came out of their switching office. Since I worked for that phone company, I did have an inside track on when those batteries would be there. That set was manufactured in 1975. I got them in 1992, and then they lasted me another 12 years. When I took them back to the scrapyard, I actually made money on them because the price of lead had gone up. Today you learned how to size your battery bank, why a higher voltage battery bank is better, and what state of discharge or what state of charge means for your battery life. Next week we'll have a look at inverters and why I chose the one that I have. Have a great week, thank you for watching, and don't forget to leave a comment and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you.